We are bro. Oh man, we got bigs in the background. Let me peep this, huh? You like it? I know you do. This is my beautiful row. Let me stand up for you. Huh? Woo! Looking lush. Boom. What's up? You like it? Huh? Woo! Nice. So how is everybody doing this evening? I hope you enjoyed watching the mad Aquarius by the name of Chris Biggs, but we're about to turn it up now. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Okay, so there is a lot of stuff that I do want to cover. This light is really bright. Let's back it up. But there is a lot of stuff that I want to cover and I want to thank everybody for taking the time out to join me in this escapade of live videos. Um, tonight's drink, before anybody asks, is Wheatley's Vodka, Iced Tea, Unsweet, and Lemonade. That's it. It's a John Daly. <laughs> so... The title of the video is, is fish keeping worth it? And the thumbnail says it all sold. And you're probably like, well, I know that he's doing the clickitaceous beta mm -hmm. I ain't falling for it. Well, you would be wrong. It is not clickbait. But that's the world we live in today where no matter what you do, it's clickbait. So guess what? The house has sold. Yeah. Yes. The house has sold. She gone. Yes, I'm still in it. Yes, I have an aquarium running with just water in it. Yes, I still have these. But by the way, this whole thing, um, three aquariums, the top one's going to be replaced by something similar. Aquarium, 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 rack, all for sale. You live in Texas. PM me, DM me, get at me, and that thing could be yours. So, house is sold. Great news. Moving. Not great news. Because I've got to take some big tanks. But there's going to be lots of planning and lots of videos to talk about how I'm going to do that. I'm not moving to New Jersey. <laughs> is that, no, no, I'm just not doing it. Um, and Baxter Stockman doesn't like it. I've got to drain this aquarium. This has got to go. I can take it, but I'm downsizing the home for a little bit. That's the plan. And then I'm going to strategically get myself going and go bigger, right? Have fun. What's going on, Jay? I reached out to Universal Rocks and they said that they weren't running any promo pricing, but I went ahead and ordered the Holy Rock anyways. Looking forward to it coming in. So uh, it's nothing bad, but Universal Rocks and I have decided, well, I didn't decide, but Universal Rocks decided there is no more discount code and for good reason. It had been going for a very long time. And my best friend is Ben, um, Stuart Dunn's son. And he said, look, man, it's been running a long time and it's, you know, so many people have it and they're maybe they're not watching your content anymore. They just know it from knowing somebody. So at some point it will come back. Good. Lots of videos. Moving tanks sucks and some good tutorials and tips to moving big tanks would be awesome. And that will happen. We're going to make it almost like a, a vlog style so that folks can understand the, the preparation that would go into it. I'm not moving to Florida. I'm not moving to New Jersey. I am moving to Oklahoma. Um, how about CJ Pico power sponge, please? Uh, there is uh, CJ micro, uh, the, the micron, there is pumps that you could, you could buy a synchro silent and put a sponge on the bottom, but that's all right. So people are going to say, why are you moving? Because I sold the home and I sold the big tank. So the big tank that you saw that was completely empty, that was supposed to be a Bavarium has been sold. It will be picked up this weekend. And people were asking the person buying it, why is he selling it? Hey, 
Why, why is he selling that fish tank? I'm going to um, wonder why he's selling the fish tank. So I'll ask you and not him. So everybody's asking this person, why are you buying his fish tank? Why is he selling it? Look, I'm moving. I don't want to move all of those aquariums. Aquariums can be purchased again, right? I need the funds more than I need that empty aquarium to turn into a vivarium. That's plain and simple. The home I'm moving into is smaller. Now the question may be, why back to Oklahoma? I'm going to answer it one time here. It is because my son lives there. I'm driving 16 total hours every weekend that I pick him up. It is not good for him. He has to sit in that car for eight of those 16 hours. It's not good for me, but more importantly, it's not good for him. I'm also looking for his future. When he has emergencies, I'll be there right away. School functions, I'm there right away. Any sporting or extracurricular activities, or if his friends want to hang out when he's hanging out with dad, I don't want it to be something where he has to make that choice. That's not fair to him. And he's going to come first in all of it. So we're moving to Oklahoma. And I'm very excited because I'm, I'm getting back to what I enjoy doing. There's not a lot of distractions, although there are distractions. They are not as abundant as they were. Do I still have people harassing me and trolling me? Yes. Do I like it? No. Does it make me laugh? Ah, oh, yes. And here's why it should make you laugh. If you get trolled, harassment kind of hits this borderline. Like, is it borderline psychotic? Well, for this person it is. But if it's, if you feel like you're in danger, the harassment shouldn't be viewed this way. You should get legal help, maybe call whoever it is to help you in that case. But I know that this person or people deep down inside cannot stop thinking about me. <laughs> day in and day out, they are recreating names for YouTube and Instagram and Facebook and changing numbers and, and doing apps. They love it. But they're thinking of me every time they do it. And honestly, thank you. You probably should get back to your life. Maybe your kids, maybe your relationship. You're so into mine. <laughs> so, um, yes. Moving to Oklahoma, it's not, it's not a pro dad. You know, somebody said it's a pro dad move. Thumbs up. You're an awesome dad. Thank you. It's not about being awesome or being a pro dad or, you know, a superhero parent or whatever it is. It's, it's him. That's the only way it should be. Now, there have been lots of things you could say, well, I, maybe I didn't have my kid's best interest at heart when I did X, Y, and Z. We're not perfect will never be perfect, but you got to right your wrongs. I've never wronged him in any way, shape or form, but I, and I don't plan to, but my goal is to be as present as I can be, as I'm allowed to be. And even if I have to stand off in the distance, I'll be there. So, and he knows that he, he does know that, but let's get to the fact of soul. House is sold, hoping to sell this. I've got to go GoPros for sale. And we're going to auction this off right now. So the highest super chat. Now, granted, this is vintage. Does These are not mine, by the way. These stains. But this is vintage. This was one at a silent auction and the proceeds went to Babes. This is luscious. It's a full on robe. It's beautiful. Highest super chat out of the next five super chats gets it. it even comes with a tie. Um, I wore something similar in the opening of the video and this could be yours. It's a one of a kind. I've never ever seen another one like it. Um, so I have to do what I have to do for me. And, you know, I've got people, you know, folks saying, can we talk about, can we talk about fish? Yeah. Adrian, whatever questions you got, talk about them. Fish are dead here. We're working with uh, Dave Schumacher of Dave's Rare Fish to get more fish here. And it's, 
it's going to be awesome. I still got the trophies that I'll be bringing and I have the Congo tank that nothing is going to be happening with it. And I have a water box 24 by 18 by 18 that will be going full on salt water. And then don't know if it's going to happen, but I'm working with custom aquariums to do a paludarium. Yes. It's not a small. Robes are usually one size fits most. So it's fish related. Oh, no. It says medium large. It's called lingerie from Nordstrom. <laughs> I can't believe this thing was sold at Nordstrom. Jay, too many of us have children, but not all of us can be parents. Proud of you as a dad. I'm still amazed how you YouTubers have to explain their every move. You guys are champions. We don't have to. And honestly, you don't have to. Uh, but when it comes to it, there was so much one-sided information that I feel that sometimes information, when I want to share it, should be shared. And it should be shared based on how I want to do it. Okay. So what else is it? Is fish keeping worth it? That's a loaded question, right? Um, I've been asked many times how I stay so energetic and so into the hobby. And it's not always the case. And if you just watch bigs, there's a lot of uh, doo-doo that floats around um, social media as a whole. But the idea for YouTube is for me to be able to talk about things that I go through, explain fish the way I understand them, and to try to educate folks in the best way I know how. And so when I think about does fish keeping seem worth it to me, heck yes. But it's subjective to the person. It's not a monetary thing. Because if you truly believe, other than owning an aquarium shop that just happens to turn a profit, because it's very hard, you're not going to make any money in a hobby. That's not what it was designed for. So if you go into that hobby with the same mentality that this is what I want to do, I'm going to enjoy every aspect of it to include the bad, then that's okay, right? So then you will find that it will become worth it to you. But if you are negative every step of the way, you allow the negativity to infiltrate your mind and you continue to populate it, it is always going to be negative and it will never, ever seem like you enjoy what you're doing. And it doesn't have to be fish keeping. It could be anything. So I hear keeping a live life helps keep you alive. It, it does. For a lot of people, it does. I think if fish keeping makes you happy, even temporarily, you should try it, learn from it and do it. Absolutely. It's not worth it if you don't enjoy it. No, it's not. And I find it that so many times you'll see folks that, you know, I don't consider myself a YouTuber. I consider myself a fish hobbyist that is a industry professional that enjoys putting videos on YouTube. I do not make a living off of YouTube. No, I do not. And it's for, I, I think this is, this is my, my thought. This is my opinion on what I see. Person gets into the hobby, realizes that it is a little bit more expensive and we find ourselves chasing other things. So they start spending more money and they go, ah, I'm going to do YouTube because I'm going to make money. Then they realize there is way more to it than just that singular piece. And I've always talked about if you are in this industry, especially this hobby, and you are primarily focused on making it about YouTuber-ish and making money, wow, <laughs> you are not going to be happy ever. And you are just going to continually go down a rabbit hole of dutyism. Um, I think a lot of people use fish keeping as an escape from the real world. It's true. That's what, that's what art is. That's what you know, kicking around a ball or playing with your dog at the park or going for a walk or working out. It's an escape from whatever it is that you were doing. 
Uh, fish keeping keeps my blood pressure down and puts me to sleep watching it. And the best stress relief for medicine uh, without using medicine. I, I mean, I agree. That's how I got into it was I had to find something and it just so happened that I was already attached to fish keeping in a way and I wanted to further it. And that's what I did. So when we, when we do this, we have to realize, we just have to realize that it's not always going to be perfect. Just like humans, nothing is ever going to be perfect. You're going to lose fish. You're going to have tanks that aren't exactly the way you want them. You are probably going to stumble, trip and fall. And the idea is to get up, admit where you are wrong, stop being a butthead, ask questions to real people that will give you truthful answers, not garbage, and move forward. Take more of the good, let go of the bad, and continue on. And if you've got kids and they turn out to be interested, because you can't force it, uh, and it turns out that they're interested, Please create a CJ MF10 with magnets. What is an MF10? So this is all about understanding fish keeping from a, a different perspective. And now the big thing for this is ask your questions. I have been keeping fish most of my life on and off. I have worked for big box retailers that sell aquatic supplies. I have worked for Universal Rocks. I have partnered with major brands. I have worked for Fritz Aquatics. I have worked the social media aspect. I have worked the marketing aspect. I have, I'm now in one of the largest positions that I could possibly be in for a company that is as massive as Siche, and I've been given the opportunity to be in charge of all of the stores in North America. It's crazy. Uh, thank you very much, Fish Tank Barn, for the tip jar. Love the lifelong learning aspect of the hobby. A top power head for the foam filter? Are you talking about like the Maxi Jet and um, the MJ? Dude, CJ has had stuff like that since Jump longer than anybody else and watch my video Sunday because it's exactly that. If you're looking for something that has magnets, well, this one has suction cups, but you can always retrofit a magnet on there. And it does all of the same stuff as what all these power heads would do. Matter of fact, it's kind of funny that you would ask that. I have one on the floor. This is a mini one. Put a sponge right here. Boom, pushes out. You can actually take this piece off and put the uh, flow regulator on there and the flow regulator would rock and roll. And so you'd have it just like this in the aquarium and the nozzle points out this way. It's the same thing. And it goes all the way up to, man, don't quote me, but I think it's like 2000 plus gallons an hour. So uh, pretty much CJ makes products that have multi-uses. We just don't know about them. How small for a Pico? Right here, Nano. Ew. Look at that. And it's very inexpensive. And if you're just looking for a Pico tank, this is like less than two inches, by the way, too. I think it's like, this is less than two inches. It's this, I mean, you're asking, look at this, Matchbox. <laughs> it's hiding it. So... Can we talk about TB and what the effects are on humans? What is TB? What is he talking about? Adrian, what are you talking about? What is TB? Um, do, 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 a top power head for a foam filter. Well, I just gave that. I had a fish for a year. I had fish for a year, but love discus. I now have a 220 with 20 discus and six angels in a rented room. And it's, it's the happiest I felt about fish keeping now. And I feel like a hobbyist. That's awesome. You're no longer chasing what you thought you were this master plan. You went exactly with what you knew brought you joy. Happiness is temporary. You need to find joy in what you do. Fish TV. What? Am I, do I, am I missing something? Spell out what TB is. Tuberculosis. 
What is TB? Fish TB. So Tango Bravo. Um, so I'll talk about how I'm prepping the move. Oh, Tom Brady? It, it, it is a fish sickness that I guess not a lot of people know about. And it has effects on humans. Well, I can't talk about it if I have no idea about it. Tuberculosis. That's what I figured. Not TV, but TB. Um, I don't know many people that have ever gotten sick from their fish. I've seen people get poisoned from uh, saltwater fish or they've gotten bit. Uh, but, you know, the idea is be sanitary. I mean, before all of whatever you think is happening right now in the world, folks, you should have been washing your hands anyways. Um, so the idea is like, it was that whole thing like, if you touch a turtle, you can get salmonella. You can get salmonella if you touch raw chicken and it has it. So the idea is you should be having sanitary precautions when you're around your fish anyways. And, and you shouldn't be holding on to your fish and hugging them. You shouldn't be with in your aquarium with open wounds or any open sores, period. Matter of fact, I did a video a long time ago where I had burned my hand doing something extremely stupid. And I had to buy gloves that went up to my shoulder so that I could do aquarium maintenance because of the open wound. So somebody asked where they can buy CJ products. I don't know where you are, but a lot of the major retailers online sell them. So you've got saltwateraquarium.com, marine depot, freshwateraquarium.com. You have uh, bulk reef supply. I don't know if they all carry um, the, the whales, um, but I know there's, there's a lot of stores that carry them and more and more stores are going to be carrying the whale. Uh, because it is, it is just a very easy to use canister filter. Um, it has flaws, just like every canister filter, but it is very, very good and very well built. Um, I'm trying to think of who else sells it online. Um, I don't know if Amazon has it, but uh, price is going to be the same pretty much anywhere you go anyways. Um, we're really good at... Um, locking down map pricing. And even if somebody does shy away from that on the internet, cause you can't be a hundred percent enforced on that. Uh, there's, I've, I've already told stores like don't lose the sale cause of it. I'm, I'm more for the local fish store. I know big, big box retailers don't carry our stuff, but um, there's a lot of larger aquarium online reputable places that do carry it. Um, so I really appreciate these questions and I, I'm, I'm greatly, I guess I'm, I'm so appreciative of how so many folks have stayed following the moves that I have done and supporting me throughout the way. Um, I have pseudo relaunched the aquatic lounge. And you can join the aquatic lounge. You got to ask a couple of questions. And I will tell you that I'm very strict on not being a turd. And I can and will because nobody can tell me not to. Uh, will remove anybody, even if they're a friend, if they act like a real jerk. So it is a wonderful place to be to ask questions about everything fish keeping. The moderators range from owning coral places like Radical Reefs to having YouTube channels like Bahama Lama Coral to Matt Webster, Josh Cunningham with Cichlids. Uh, myself is the admin. We've got a gentleman who really doesn't have a huge presence socially. His name's Geronimo. He is an amazing person to ask questions to as well. And we're, we're constantly looking for new great people to be a part of that team. And it's called the Aquatic Lounge. It's on Facebook and we're going to get real hot and heavy with it. It's going to be really cool. There's going to be a lot of private giveaways, sponsorships, and really neat things that um, only the Aquatic Lounge members will know. And that's another, uh, not rule, but just guidance. Whatever happens in there, we don't really want it out. We want to keep it in. That's why it's a private group. So um, I, I hope that if you want to join, great. It's not going to be for everybody and I don't expect it to be for everybody. So I'm going to be getting a 300 gallon stock tank for outside. I will be putting six common goldfish in there. Do you have any filter recommendations? Yes. Depending on where you live, large, 
pond style filtration. Number one, goldfish are waste producing machines. Outside has the ability for contaminants to enter the water and, and maybe not um, adverse reaction style contaminants, but with pollen and leaves and bugs, you're going to want a filter that turns over a lot of water and a lot of water. So 300 gallons, I would probably want to do 10 times that. Uh, to be honest with you, especially for algae, you could do a lot of different, um, a lot of different things in terms of filtration to help cut down all of that algae. But let me think of what, like a filter, like the green reset from CCHA is a very powerful external canister pond filter. And you can go for that. It is a little bit pricier, but it has UV sterilizers built in. Um, and it's really cool. So next question, I had a family crisis. Uh, first of all, whatever it was, you don't have to say, I hope that you've gotten through it and that things are on the up and up. I had a 10 gallon guppy tank got seriously neglected. It's now overpopulated and very dirty. Should I take it apart and clean the whole thing, saving as much bio as I can? So here's the thing. They've been living like that for how long? So I would slowly do maintenance to bring it back to the place where you want it. Don't do everything at one time. So I would probably um, maybe do a water change first, uh, maybe change a piece of the media, not a biological uh, media piece, maybe add a polishing pad uh, inside that hang on the back or whatever you're doing to filter it. If it's a sponge filter, maybe add a second one to help out. Um, and anyone can join that Facebook uh, group anyone. And I did see that it cut out for no reason. So I apologize, but yes, anyone can join the Facebook group. And I was answering the question. Somebody had a family crisis, their 10 gallon guppy tank got neglected. It's now overpopulated. It's dirty. She asked what she should do, or he asked what he should do. And I simply said, don't do everything at one time. So please don't do everything at one time. Slow and steady won the race. Um, do, do, do. Let me see if I know this is not a Heineken. This is a John Daly. It's Wheatley's Vodka from Buffalo Trace Distillery, some unsweet tea and some lemonade. So more questions, by the way, if you're interested in this very sexy robe, I won't even do an auction. It'll just be the next super chat gets it, but you have to pay for shipping if you only do a dollar. <laughs> Uh, because I can't afford to ship it. So really cool robe and we could do matchy matchy with mine. Um, I'm going to be doing some really neat videos on some products that CJ has that I think are very beneficial to us. Um, it won't be all of them because I think that that's, um, that's silly actually to do all of them. Uh, but Buffalo Trace is down the street. That's a rude comment. <laughs> I love that place. Uh, so... Uh, this Sunday, there's a video that's coming out on what I truly believe is the most multi-talented piece of equipment in our industry, and it's overlooked. It has over 10 plus uses. I think the internet cut out again. Honestly, um, I really think it cut out. I have no idea what's happening, but the internet just sometimes sucks. So what I'm going to do is since this live stream seems to be cutting in and out, but well, actually somebody just said it's not cutting out. I'm getting, and maybe somebody can confirm my time hasn't worked since I started. And the amount of people in here keeps changing to blank. <laughs> so, um, I'm also getting information from other folks that it is fine. So if I, we're going to keep going. I don't care. We'll just keep going until this is done. So ask your questions, but I'm going to do this video on Sunday. I'm very excited about it. I've been working on new audio. My audio is getting better. And I'm going to be filming a couple more videos in that room because guess what? That room will go away soon since we sold the house. And I want to have some nostalgia for it. Uh, the two vivariums have uh, actually one inhabitant. Uh, one of the cats 
brought in and they brought in a gecko. So Sonic has not come back. I've tried everything. And he, I just, at this point, I have kind of swallowed the pill that he's, that I'm just not going to see him again. And while it sucks, I guess that's, that's it. I've tried everything I could possibly try. The other cat, Jack, who is bang, marble bangle and something else. He, he brought in a gecko and hurt his tail, but, um, we we're able to get him, get him off the ground without being injured and moved him into one of the vivariums right now. So he is good until he's rehabbed, feeling comfortable, and then I'll release him back into the wild. He's eating and doing, <laughs> doing gecko stuff inside this vivarium. And then once I figure out if that paludarium is going to happen with custom aquariums, I've got to figure out what I want to do because I want to keep some really cool fish at the bottom, but I also want to keep a amphibian or a reptile that can live above water. And so the idea is they have to be from the same area. So it all has to fit perfectly. Um, I don't even know what you're drinking. Do it, because people said it cut out. That's why. I see a lot of black algae growing on rocks in my tank. Any ideas on how to control it from taking over? The tank is 125 gallon. So there are many ways to try to control it, Joe. The first things that I would ask you, and if you watch bigs, would be this. What's your nitrate level? Number one. How long do you leave your lights on and what kind of lights do you have? What do you feed and how often do you feed? And what is your stock level in that aquarium? Also, is there ambient light that hits that aquarium no matter what from any angle throughout the day? And what is the temperature? If you can give me all of that, honestly, I can probably provide you with the best possible scenario to help reduce the issue you're having so that you can overcome it. Um, will we get another fish tank tour revamped at the new place? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of things that have changed, um, for me personally, professionally, and this is YouTube. It's part of the journey and I want folks to see it. Like you've seen me get a lot of weight. <laughs> you've seen me lose a lot of weight. You've seen me get sick. Uh, and, and you know, be in the hospital for my eye. And then you've seen me go into surgery for uh, pancreatitis and gallstones. And so you've seen the birth of my son. You've supported me through the business that I've had, um, you know, to, to be able to go through in vitro fertilization so that I can fulfill a, a dream of being a father. And then, you know, you've seen the ups and downs. You've seen no videos. You've seen videos. You've seen shit videos. You've seen semi-decent videos. And so there is a lot to update you on. And there's a lot that, you know, may shock you and that's whatever. It's my life. And if I'm enjoying what I'm doing and it is not hurting my health or interfering negatively in my son's life, it's all gravy, baby. So Redfish Bluefish has a great video about one month. Uh, one, about one month for new tanks. Definitely need archer fish in the paludarium. I do, I do dig that. Um, but then I have to look, I don't know where archer fish are from. Are they from the Amazon? I would, and can they be kept with other fish and do they require specific things? Um, but yeah, it's, I'm, I'm working on it with custom aquariums. And like I said, I don't know if it's, it's going to happen, but if it does fantastic, if it doesn't, then it doesn't happen. So where do I not have to deal with suction cups on rim where I do not have to deal with suction cups on rim tanks? Well, even if it has a rim tank, what's the deal if you have suction cups, suction cups are okay. If they're good. Um, what was the other thing that I wanted to chat with you about? Oh, I had an idea. This is what it was. So haps and peacocks have always been the thing. Um, Joe, if you don't mind, you can ask, you can put it right here really quick. Uh, if not, you can email it to askawaywithj at gmail.com. Uh, but I would love to answer the question here because based on that information, nobody is going to judge whatever is happening. And Honestly, it could help quite a few people, even if it just helps one. So I had this idea of bringing haps back, maybe peacocks, I'm not sure. 
but I want to do it outside and I want to do it with a pond. So at this new place, I'll be there at least a year. And I thought what better way than to immediately start an outdoor pond summertime. I've got the capabilities of doing it with the filtration devices I have and getting haps and peacocks back with beautifying a backyard with a beautiful um, man with just like a beautiful landscape with trees and plants. And I'm, I'm curious to see if folks would want to see something like that. I would make it easy. I'm not going to dig, um, but I'm also not going to use a pool. <laughs> so um, let me know what you think. It'll be haps and peacocks, cichlids, and I think it's going to be pretty sweet if it happens. So the information I can mes message you if you're on with it. Thank you. Yeah, just message it to me. Uh, have you ever come across Evolution Aqua Aquariums? I have not. CJ magnets are nice compared to suction cups. They are. Uh, CJ also makes really good suction cups. So... Um, Rest assured that they will work very well. Keep in mind, snakes, birds, etc., will love your little fishies. Um, they're not going to be little, and I had planned for that. So the idea is this is a more populated neighborhood than what I'm used to living in. So the idea of this pond would be okay in the area that it's in, and... I think it's good to go through it, but yes, I would be very aware of neighborhood cats, um, you know, uh, heron, um, raccoon, you name it, uh, getting back there, but really excited to see what happens. How big on the pond? Um, 700 plus gallons. And so, yeah, it's, it's going to be, ah, I don't know. I'm in talks with it. I don't know if it will definitely happen. I have already got approval uh, from the person that owns the home that is renting it out. So they were totally cool with it. They said, look, you seem cool. You, you know, I've, he's, I've watched some videos. I see how you keep stuff. And as long as the yard looks the same way when you leave. So even if I have to put down, you know, uh, cement pavers, I don't really want to do a cement block because then I got to break it up and move it where this, the cement pavers, I can just put down and then put the pond on top and beautify it around. Of course, I'm going to use, you know, universal rock stuff to make it look really nice. What is up, John Edwards, future dad in the house. Hope you're doing well. Can you swim in it? Wendy, if you would like to swim in the pond, that is on you, but just know that cichlids, African cichlids can be jerks. I've never done a pond like this before. Um, it's going to have a, like a viewing panel if I do it. It's not going to be in the ground, so it won't be a top-down view. Although I'm going to make it so um, Liam can get up there and you know feed the fish and really make it nice. And so I don't know where it's going to go in this backyard. When I get to the house, I actually go to the house the 21st on Father's Day, I'm picking up Liam and uh, we're bringing a load of furniture and boxes to the place, putting it in the garage. And then I'll take a picture of the backyard. Matter of fact, maybe I'll do a video. So if you follow me on Instagram and Facebook, I'll post it there. Um, there is no restrictions on the pond because I'm not digging. There is no restrictions for putting it in the backyard because of the privacy fence. The idea is you just cannot see what you're doing across the way. Um, and I'm not tying in to any electrical or running electrical. There's already an outlet in a couple of the areas that I thought of putting it. Um, I had a small koi disappear to a neighborhood cat happens, but doesn't always work out. Absolutely. I mean, it's with anything. I mean, I had people come into a home and I still think it was them and I lost fish. It happens. It sucks. And we really just have to learn from it. And I'll know next time to maybe have some cameras on it. So Jay, now you're being a CJ rep. Is it okay to ask if you have an opinion on the FX filter, if it has changed in what way? No, it hasn't changed. Um, that's actually a good question. And I appreciate that HEPA. Um, so the question was, and I'll rephrase it is, 
Now that I work for CCHE and they make aquarium canister filters, do my opinions change about the FX series from Fluval? No, it doesn't. It is a beast of a filter. Knowing what I know now, that filter is not an aquarium filter, although it's marketed to aquariums, very smart on their behalf. It is a pond filter, hence the quick uh, water change method on the bottom, the pump on the outside. It is very, very much like a pond filter. It is designed exactly the same. So if I look at it and I say, okay, here's the deal. Does CJ have an aquarium filter that competes with the FX? The answer is no, it doesn't. And so yes, the FX6 will be a better filter if you're looking for that much bigger of a filter. Aquarium wise, if you're looking for a dominant filter, CJ does have them, but it's not an aquarium filter. And you have to connect a pump externally. It's called the green reset. And it has built-in UV sterilizers. It's a monster. It is big like the FX6, but it is more powerful in every way, shape, or form. It's just not geared towards aquariums because CJ realized that that is a pond filtration device. Now, if somebody goes, hey, look, I don't care that it's for ponds, I'm going to use it. Then absolutely bring it into your aquarium room and run it. And CJ is known for being quiet. And so it's not going to be loud. And now you're going to get, let me, uh, I'll tell you right now. Can somebody look up? This is, I like, these are good questions. Can somebody look up the GPH for the FX6? Because I don't know it off the top of my head. And then I'm going to look up the green reset. <laughs> so the smallest green reset, I don't know if you can see it. The smallest green reset measures at 18.1 inches by 15 inches, okay? <clears throat> it's a volume of 6.6 .6 US gallons. It has two pieces of foam, two pieces of, of different coarse foam, 563 gallons per hour on the FX6. So CJ labels out, Let's say you're going to do a cichlid tank and you decide to go with the green reset. This is going to do 520 US gallons is what it's geared for, for a pond, heavily stocked pond. Okay. So when you have the 563 gallons per hour, you're cramming stuff in there. It's not, it's head height is different. A uh, head max is the pressure that goes to the top. So it's definitely not coming out at 563. That's every, it probably CJ is the same way. But the pump that you add externally to this, if you did a low stock pond, it will filter optimum flow rate of 1,056 US gallons for that pond or 21,000 for what they believe to happen. That would be a good flow for a 2,000 gallon pond. So I have a green reset that I'm gonna put on a 700 gallon pond. Imagine putting a green reset, maybe that's something I should try. Imagine putting a green reset on an aquarium. Um, how much time do I have? You guys wanna see one? I have one, I have the 25. I can pull it out of the box and show you. Um, but I don't wanna do it if, if there's nobody that wants to see it. Your pond will look awesome just like you are. Oh, I love it. Thank you. Um, two 36 inch lights from Current USA. The tank is stocked with peacocks and haps 20. Two Synodonis, one Colombian Pleco. Natural light for about four hours a day. Tank light on for two to four hours. Water changes monthly. So I would probably say it has a lot to do with lighting because that four hours of natural light plus four hours of artificial light by your current USA lights, which I would assume would be the pros, is a lot. Your nutrients in terms of nitrate is probably very elevated based on your stock. And I would say you're probably potentially overfeeding regardless of the food that you're feeding. But if you stopped feeding every day, maybe spaced it out, fast them every couple of days, fast them for a day or two, and then feed them. Let's 
Let's up the water changes to do two a month instead of one a month. And let's cut the, not the natural light, because clearly you can't shut off the sun, but let's cut off those current lights maybe for a week. We're not going to black out the tank yet, but let's do that for a week and you should see a difference. Now you may have to clean up some of that in order to counteract it with bacteria. If you want to speed this process up, you can absorb nutrients by using a product called Monster 360 from Fritz Aquatics. Hands down the best one in its class, not because I work there, but because of the parts per billion in terms of bacteria count. So somebody wants to see this, the green reset. So give me one second. Let me grab it. So very, very similar boxing style, right? Just like a little unboxing video. Check, check out my basketball shorts. So the green reset. Look at this thing. Now, interesting design and produce in Italy. Yes, that's CJ. So um, let me look here. Do, 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 do. It's got water inlet, water outlet, back wash handle. It's got right and left to open or close it. Patented cleaning system. So all you got to do is go pop it out the middle, clean those baskets, pop it in. You don't even have to pick up the filter. You've got UV light indicators. So all of these have built in UV lights. Now this is Italian grade. It is, it's solid and I'm going to take it out and you're going to be like, what is that? Um, it also has the backwash drain outlet, which is what I was talking about. It, UV lamp, bio balls, and it's got really cool foam in it. Now, on the side, it tells me some really good information. And this is maybe some will learn and some won't learn. Um, we'll get to the price in a moment. So the green reset, 10 watt UV lamp, two pieces of sponge, and it says suggested pump for a pond, mind you, is a Master DW4000. Just so happens I have one of those because you just drop it in to the pond and it will absorb up to four millimeters of whatever it is, gravel, uh, twigs, food, debris, shoop, right through that, through that pump. So you can use it for water changes and it, fill, it pushes the water through this filter, right? That's what the external motor does, the pump on the FX6. It is attached to the canister because they realized if they wanted to get that volume that they had to put the pump on the outside. CJ knew that from jump a long time ago. So when they developed the green reset for ponds, that's the idea. Every pond filter that is designed for moving lots of water cannot do it as an all-in-one. Just can't happen. It's the same thing when you look at, you know, the, the trade-offs with like an electric car. You're like, oh, an electric car. Um, I don't have to worry about what? Gas, right? I don't have to worry about oil changes. Ooh, sweet. My car, I drive a Honda CRV. It is a grandma SUV and I love it. Just got new tires, by the way, and it's pretty sweet. But that thing will get me 435 miles to the tank. Currently, it costs me $17 to fill it up. If I had a Tesla, which I absolutely have always wanted, I don't get the distance. So if I was to pick up my son, I would have to stop twice. I stopped zero times with the CRV. So it's the same concept. You're not going to be able to get that maximum flow rate by putting the pump inside. So when you move it externally and you don't make it bulky, you don't get such a massive flow, but you get much better than any other canister filter that would be on the market. So it also breaks down um, a lot of information for keeping a pond so you don't jack it up. So let's get it out. And somebody wanted to know the price of it. So of course the price is going to be more expensive than an FX6 because you have to buy an external pump. But guess what? If you already have an external pump that you can utilize to move water, 
you don't have to worry about it. And most most CJ pumps, like if you have a return, things if you have a return pump, you can utilize that if you can use it in and out of water. Um, HEPA Aquatics gets the bathrobe, absolutely, but it's sending it to Canada. We'll have to talk. <laughs> so comes with bio balls. Don't have to spend the money. <laughs> you ready? Look at that. Guess what this is for? Water to come out. So when it's filtering and it goes back in, you can push it out to a fountain if you want it to. Um, you can split it off. It looks like a vacuum. Ideally, that's, you know, the can is what it is. Now, look, it's like everything. Ah, I just dislocated my thumb. I think I'm supposed to unscrew this, but I haven't actually got to play with this, but it is massive. But it's designed. It is cheaper than a Dyson. Man, that really hurt my thumb. That's twice that I dislocated my thumb. Comes with all the nozzles you need for your hoses. Simple as that. Now, somebody wanted to know how much it was. Give me a second. Let me pull it, um, pull it up. Man, I've done that twice to my thumb. Once on the car and then once there. I don't even know why I tried that. Do, 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 do. Let me see if this bad boy. Bum, 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 ba -da bum, bum, bum. Of course, the one thing that I look at would not, would not tell me. Because different places would, depending on where you live, um, it may be different prices. Um, but let me see. La, da, da, da. I love how this company has everything organized. All right. Bum, bum, green reset. Green reset. So map price would be 400 bucks and it does 2000 gallon pond. So when you're doing pond filtration, it's pretty sweet. Um, all electronics are that way. Separate components are always better than electronics with everything in them unless can go wrong when it does. You're right. You're absolutely right. Now, when I look at this, what I love about it is tells me everything I need to know. Actually, it looks futuristic. I mean, it really does look futuristic, I have to say. There's the, man, this is, it's pretty sweet. There it is. It's really tight for water tightness. So that's, do I pop it off? I probably should read the directions, right? Oh, it tells me. It says clean. So you move it this way, and then you got to clean your filter. Ha! Ah! Filter. So you move it so you can clean it, and you push it back when it's time to filter. This thing is massive. Um, 10 watts. Sweet. It's a bad mamba jamba with the UV sterilizer and everything in it. So there will be an unboxing. There will be an installation. It's like R2D2. Yes. So can you take the lid off? Yeah. Let me, what's really neat is although COVID hurt a lot of the travel, I've had the ability to really learn products. And this is this is one that I haven't, it was brand new in the box. I just opened it. Uh, I've been doing, if you go to CJ's YouTube channel, I've been doing a ton of videos in terms of unboxing them and going through the instructions on how to hook them up. So uh, let me look on how to open this real quick. Do, 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 do. Man, this thing is a monster. I mean, it's, it's a beast. Now, what's really cool is if you get to like the green reset 60, <laughs> um, you can maybe, maybe we can filter the ocean. 
<laughs> Maybe we can filter the ocean. Yeah, it's showing this like this massive. I would assume that. Yep, there we go. Okay. This right here. Up. Oh. This is metal, by the way. It's like a belt clip. <laughs> it's a belt clip. Now I just gotta figure out how to pop this puppy off. Ugh. This is good. I can't even get in it. There we go. <laughs> Are you ready for the foam? <laughs> I was not expecting that. So this is going to be what I would assume is the UV sterilizer encased in here. You would remove it that way. <laughs> and then the bio balls. What's really cool is this is cool. There's a false bottom, which you don't have to use bio balls. They come with it, but there's a false bottom in the bucket and you can't see it because it's dark, but it's solid, very solid, but this is intense. So maybe this is a new video that canister filters trump sumps <laughs> when you use a green reset. Holy cow. Now, Grant, this is designed for ponds. Like this is designed for filtering, you know, a 2000 gallon pond, right? That's the idea, but it's not for doing an aquarium yet. But I'd be really curious. I do like that this is metal. Kudos. But I would propose that it could be used on an aquarium, a massive aquarium, if maybe somebody didn't have the space for a sump. Maybe it was after the fact, right? And so I'm definitely using it outside. But look, that's the green reset, 25. That's the 100. <laughs> Man, it looks like a... Uh, hot water heater, like the size of a hot water heater. So definitely massive. And I think you can see it. You can go to cj.com. You're not going to be able to see it as clear. Go to cj.com and you'll be able to see a, uh, is it waterproof for the outside? Yeah, it's designed to be outside. It's designed to be in the elements. It's not designed to be under a cabinet. Um, so under a cabinet would just be that much better. Uh, yeah. So even if you had an area where you had no place to put a sump, but you had an area you can build on the side and you can store this or get it under, it'd be massive uh, for filtering an aquarium. So looks like dark helmet. Yeah, it does. It really does. Ludicrous speed. All right. So somebody said, what did you do in the military? Oh, well, I did a lot of stuff. Um, I joined as a person that wanted to be a Navy SEAL. And although I am 100% glad that I was unable to do that because the job that I selected in the Navy does not cross rate to a SEAL. And what's funny is the job that I selected was what they called an in-demand rate. Meaning once you were in, it was gonna be a whole heck of a time to get out. I even tried to become a diver and I was unable to leave the job I was in. So. From there, I was a military police officer. I then moved to be Harbor Patrol. So I drove uh, security boats in Pearl Harbor uh, at the age of 18 uh, till I was 20. And then I took a job with NCIS um, and became a pseudo federal agent for NCIS and 
travel the world protecting critical assets, whether they were human assets, physical assets, or um, other sort of assets. And that's what I did. I tra- I've been to over 40 plus countries. I've been to every continent but Antarctica. I actually almost went to Antarctica, but the helicopter didn't work. Um, yeah, the greatest job ever. I, I was an agent, basically secret service for the military. I've protected folks like um, the president of Pakistan. I protected 40 diplomatic spouses from um, 40 different secretary defense equivalent nations throughout the world. Uh, I protected them in Indonesia for a couple days. And um, I've protected foreign dignitaries, American dignitaries. I've worked with pretty much everybody from special forces from New Zealand, Canada, uh, Mexico, um, Saudi Arabia. I lived in Saudi Arabia for a year. I protected the guy that was in charge of training the Saudis. Um, uh, Yeah, I had a really cool job. (laughs) But it it was, if I had a camera that I traveled with then and I was into vlogging then like I am now, (laughs) oh my goodness, we would have been to the top of Mount Everest. I buzzed it. Um, I was with the Nepalese Rangers and they said, you want to go to Mount Everest? And I'm like, oh my God, yes. And it's just like, boom, go, you know? And so uh, we were in this plane where we buzzed the top, like the, the peak of Mount Everest and nobody had oxygen, but the pilots, it sucked. Um, Really cool. Just really neat. Uh, job I have, I've, I've been, I've met many presidents, future past. Um, I mean, not that you like him or not, but um, I had President Trump move a plane before he was president. Um, and he did willingly, he was, a, you know, was very polite with it. Um, I've had, not physically had dinner, but I've sat in the same room that had dinner with um, the Clintons. I have been busted for taking too many M&Ms out of the White House uh, by President Bush. <laughs> Man, that's a good story. Um, I've met, met a lot of famous people and I enjoyed it. Dangerous uh, a lot. I've been in helicopter issue. I've been in a plane issue. I've been in lots of other issues. And at the end of the day, I'm, I'm very thankful for the opportunities that I was able to have. I am very proud to have done what I have done. And, you know, one of the things is, you know, folks, they don't really think of it this way, but I defended freedom and democracy, the Constitution, the rights to do what it is you enjoy doing, freedom of speech, freedom of protest, um, the freedoms that you enjoy today, I felt that it was my duty to protect those. And I did. And it's not for everybody. And not everybody agrees with it. And that's okay. Because at the end of the day, I'm sitting here in front of you talking about a green reset 25. Um, if you are ever in Raleigh, North Carolina, the first couple of rounds of drinks are on me. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I, I've, I've got to experience a lot of stuff. I see things differently than most folks do. Um, so with that, um, I'll take a few more questions. I want to be your friend. Uh, I'll take a few more questions, whatever it is that you have. Um, it could be about anything. It could be about my military experience. It could be about fish, uh, whatever it is. Um, but yeah, I, I truly enjoyed it. I've been through, you know, training that absolutely sucked. And I've been through training that I thought would suck and was extremely fun. Um, one of those being, uh, going through, um, you know, a, a, an executive protection school for six and a half weeks. And it was really cool to learn, you know, different aspects of searching and, and paying attention to things. It's just really, really fun. Uh, what was your installments, Jay? So I, I, I assume you mean, where was I deployed to? Um, I didn't have deployments. I had missions. 
you making a video on this filter will be cool. I definitely will. Uh, thank you very much. I love the shirt as well. Um, I was stationed in Florida and Hawaii twice. I was stationed at Central Command, Pacific Command, and Pearl Harbor Police Department at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. And I have been on missions all over the world. Um, countries off the top of my head, Djibouti, Eritrea, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan, uh, Sydney, Australia, uh, Auckland, New Zealand, Singapore, uh, I've been to Thailand multiple places, Vietnam multiple places, Mongolia. I've been to China. I've been to Canada. I've been a lot. Is there CJ distribution? Yes, there is CJ distribution in Canada. You could, um, yeah, there's pretty much, we're covered, not a lot in the West, but we're pretty much covered in the Central and East. Uh, for not all the products, but for most. Can you tell us all you did, but we can see it, the passion. You can tell us all you did, but we can see it on the passion of being a dad. Yeah, being a dad is fun. It's it definitely is cool. And, and I don't know how I would have experienced leaving and coming back. Like I would, I would go for a week or two and come back. And honestly, I would be back for a day and leave again for two weeks. A matter of fact, the worst one in terms of time was pack your bags for two weeks. Two weeks turned into a month. A month turned into a year with what, what we backed. And you make do with it. You don't complain about it. You just do it. Uh, and it was, I think one of the greatest experiences about it is it didn't matter where you came from, right? Didn't matter where you came from, what you looked like, what generation you came from, what ethnicity what gender you thought you were, zero Fs were given for that. You assimilated and you worked together to achieve a common goal. That was it. That was it. And I learned a lot about history and culture and um, cultural acceptance and, and cultural norms and what were stereotypes and what were true and what weren't true. And... Goodness gracious, great balls of fire. It was amazing. Matter of fact, I remember trading a pair of Oakley glasses. Uh, they were, I'll never forget. They were Oakley, Oakley half jackets. I needed transportation. There was no taxi that would pick me up. I was in Nepal, the Maoist. I think the Maoists are regarded as, as a terrorist organization now, but the Maoists were doing some crazy stuff and I had to get to the embassy and I was at one, one part of Kathmandu. And I traded my Oakley sunglasses for a moped. <laughs> and I, I took the moped to the embassy, left it outside the embassy for them to check it. They brought it back in and then I gifted it uh, to the embassy to give to somebody that needed it. But I mean, it's stuff like that. It was just so fun. I was stationed on the USS ABH-3, an ISO GEMA LPH. So I believe he was on an amphibious assault craft and worked with a lot of Marines. And so kudos to you, Patrick. Thank you for being on the live stream and thank you for your service. So folks, with that, uh, I am going to end it. Was Hillary as nasty as the Secret Service said? Hmm. I will say that she was, I knew her when she was uh, the Senator of New York and none of her interns were allowed to speak inside the office. They had to communicate via messenger. Um, she did not allow anybody to just walk into her office <laughs> till she met me um, because my job was not to respect a silly rule to not walk in your office. My job was to make sure that everybody knew what was going on for the asset that was moving. Um, and she was a part of it. Um, she definitely just speaks her mind. We'll put it that way. Okay. Easy. She speaks her mind. That's it. Um, but yes, that's it. So I appreciate you, uh, joining this live stream. It was very all over the place and it's okay. Cause I enjoy it that way. I uh, look forward to the green reset 25 pond setup. Hopefully I'll get that pond set up at the new place, but definitely you'll see an unboxing and initial review of that. Uh, maybe I won't I don't know if you saw, maybe somebody can slow it down and see my thumb go all the way back. Um, 
Video on Sunday is going to be pretty sweet. These will happen every Wednesday unless I am in the process of moving. Hopefully, I will still be able to do it, but maybe I'll even pop up live just for a few moments to just chat and tell folks how they're doing. Um, I've never said this, but if you come across Ninja Turtle things, tag me in them. I may even Zelle, Apple Pay, Venmo, whatever you money to pick it up because I absolutely love Ninja Turtle stuff. So check out Instagram. we got some cool fish stuff happening, cool travels. I'll be in Houston next Thursday, Wednesday and Thursday. So if you live in Houston, uh, it's the 17th and 18th, I believe. I will be down there. I will be visiting a bunch of stores. Uh, so hit me up if you want to link up and we can chit chat. And maybe I'll have some goodies along the way to, to hand you. Appreciate it. Appreciate all you do. And remember, It's dark in a lot of places. Just try to be the light. And if you make a wrong, make it right. Those are actually country music lyrics. And it's a good song for a perfect time. Not everywhere is crap. Not all of it's bad. We think we're this small when we're actually 8 billion deep. It's not all it's shown to be. Be you, say thank you, hold the door, smile, high air high five somebody if you're not comfortable fist bumping. But just remember, everybody that is walking is also dealing with something. So don't pass judgment on somebody because we are ones not to judge ourselves. We're not perfect. You know what's next. Holla! <laughs>